right guys we're back in the booth tonight I wanted to thank our sponsor of the video lurebuild.com jimmy has excellent blanks eyes stencils from insane custom stencils he has his own brand uh, so go check him out lurebuild.com for all your painting and lure supply needs so let's get to it all right we are back in the booth tonight oh uh, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to do one of these Magnum deep diving crankbaits. Uh, I think this would be the equivalent of a X, an 8XD knockoff. This is from Alternative Lures. And we're actually going to do this one in blueback herring. So what I've already done is I put one um, coat of Autoborn Sealer Silver on, and then I put two coats of aluminum based median on this. And the reason I use the medium is because I am gonna use some candies and the candy just jumps off of this silver. It's really meant for it. Uh, it really gives it a good finish. So let's get busy. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put uh, a little bit of blue metallic silver on the top not going to put a whole lot on here. This is a very thick paint. And I'm just going to get a little bit on the top here. It's very hard to even see it. Because it really does blend with that silver really well. Okay, we're gonna clean the gun out. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and heat set that because we're gonna go ahead and do some of the detail stuff on this. had one of the subscribers ask for a blueback heron, which I love to do them because they're in my home lake at Clark's Hill. So I do know what they look like in in our lakes. So let's let's heat set this real quick. and just take it out of the I'm gonna take it out of the um device and I'm gonna get my my stencil out and I'm just gonna lay it over it because what I'm gonna do now is it's gonna be a I'm gonna pull it just a little closer I want you to be able to see it but I got to get it closer to me I don't want it rocking either let's get a Let's get a sponge and put it up under here. No, that ain't gonna work. I'll slide it back. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And the first color I'm gonna use is gonna be the black. I'm gonna use some carbon black. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna put a little carbon black scale pattern. Then I'm gonna come back with a little bit of gold. And then I'm gonna come back with a little bit of um pearl white. It's kind of a neat technique. So let's get some black. You just got to leave your 
I may even have to pin this down just a little bit. Cut my pressure down just a little bit. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's see if, how I'm gonna do this here. Because I wanna leave it pretty much stationary. I don't wanna, I don't want it to move. And I wanna get it at the right angle so I'll just hold this with my hand and I'm gonna do the black. Just a thin, just on the top side of the bait. I don't want it super dark. And then I'm gonna let it up and I'm gonna hook my other gun up. And I'm gonna get a little bit of gold And when I'm doing this is I'm looking, I'm kind of looking at the, at the scale pattern of what I've already done. And I'm just gonna come just below it, just a little bit with the gold. But I'm gonna put a little bit on a, on a herring. The face is a little bit gold too. So we're gonna do a little bit around face and this gill. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to get my other gun. That's the only good thing about having a couple of guns when you're doing something like this is to keep it um, so you're not having to change out every time. So I'm just going to get a little bit of iridescent pearl. I'm not going to need a whole lot but it'll it'll definitely make this thing sing so what we're going to do we're going to take it and just go right below your gold okay and i'll set this to the side because we're going to have to do the opposite side we'll take that off and you can see it gives it a really cool look because we're going to do the top totally different so don't worry about the top and it is hard to see the white unless i really turn it and you can actually see that pearl on it so i'm going to heat set that really quick I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my kill dot on it real quick while I got it on this side. But it's really a cool looking bait. Colors go really well. So what we'll do, I've still got black in here. I'm just going to get my gun hooked back up. Let's go ahead and make sure my tip ain't dry. And I'm just going to come up off the point of this gill plate on this bait. And I'll hit it just right here. Okay, that's perfect. So we'll take that, I'll let you see it. Just remember we haven't done anything on the top and it does have the scale pattern in it. You, you just gotta be able to see, I don't know if the camera is so, the lights are kind of bright but you can actually see each one of the different scale patterns in it. Kind of cool. So we're gonna flip it over and we're just gonna do the same thing. You know, you can actually, if you don't have this hoop type setup that I have, you can do it with, um, you can just wrap it. You know, I'm just, I'm not big on wrapping them. I just, I never have been. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna hit the black again, just on the top. Let it come down just a little bit. I'm gonna 
grab our gold. Grab our gold. Unless I grab the wrong gun, I'm sorry, I grabbed the pearl white. Glad I didn't shoot that on there. So I got the gold, I got the right one now. Okay, and we're gonna just go just below the black. Well, that blasted it, that wasn't good. And we'll put a little bit on the face here. It's really not gonna be a big deal. It's, um, I can hit it with some of this white. And we'll go ahead and take this and slide it down. We'll go ahead and hit our white on here. And I'll go up a little bit where that gold came in, blend it in. And we'll take that off. It gives it a really cool look. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this pearl white since I got it in the gun. And I'm gonna hit the, the I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hit the belly of this. Okay, that's about all I want to do. I'm gonna heat set that, then I'll come back and put the kill dot on this side, and then we'll go to work on the top of this bait. Go ahead and get our kill dot on. Take that off. Go ahead and set. Just come off. Just come off the um the gill plate here. And I like it about right there. Take it off and that looks good. So we'll let that dry just for a second. And I'm gonna clean these other guns out. I'm gonna take this stuff and before it dries because I'm not gonna need that anymore. I may just take a little bit, I got a little bit of gold in this gun. There we go. And I'm gonna run it just to soften up that kill dot just a little bit. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, get you, get you an index card and run up it. I just don't like wasting paint. Had a little bit of gold, that should do it. We'll go ahead and clean this gun out, put it up. That is a good thing about having a, a couple of guns. You can save some time, not having to, well, you won't waste paint is what you'll do because you're not cleaning the gun out every other second. So let me clean that black out real quick, then we'll clean the other one out and then we'll move to the top. And there's a reason why I didn't do the top. Um, a matter of fact, I'm gonna take a little bit of this black and we're gonna go ahead and just fill this in. I'm not gonna do it super dark. Cause what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some candy on there. explain to you how, what, what I'm gonna do with that. There's a, a method to the madness on this blue back herring that you may not know. 
Let's just get this cleaned out because I'm going to use this gun. Let that dry really good. I'll tell you something else we got to do real quick. We didn't put our fin on there. We're going to do that real fast. Let me clean this other gun out. We are going to put a fin on there. And I'm going to use a stencil from Whitmore Farms. I just like the, the look of this on these bigger baits. This is a very big bait. This thing's going to dive probably 25, 30 feet. These blanks came from Alternative. It's his Magnum Deep Diver. Like I said, it's, uh, it's going to be the equivalent of an 8XD. It's a very large bait. So what we're going to do is I... I've got my stencil right here. I just want to see how I want to do this. Well, I want to just lay it there. I can do that. you probably be able to see it a little bit better. Give me a little bit more black in the gun. I'm not going to need a bunch. So I'm going to use this one here. I like this one with the, it's actually got some lines in it. To, well, what it does is it's going to save me from going back and doing it with a marker because I will do that. I use these sponges just to kind of hold my, my stencil steady and I'll just come off. I'll come off the, um, the gill plate. And, and we'll go right here. I'll put my hand on it. And I'll just lightly go over it. And that's what you get. I just, I love that. I just love his stencil. Let me heat set that real quick so I don't mess up. Flip it over and we'll do the same thing. Just dry off your stencil on the other side so you don't put wet paint down on the on the lure. And I'll just line it up off my gill. I'm gonna go about right there. Take my gun. Just lightly go over it. I don't want it super dark. And there you go. So we will get our stand back out now because I can put it back in the stand for what I'm going to do next. Because I'm going to have to mix this real quick. And you can actually see all the layers of stenciling, the different colors where you go from white to gold to black. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get some uh, Candy 2.0 black. And... This actually works out very well for this bait because the Candy 2.0 black has a violet tint to it, kind of purple, and the blueback herring have a purple tint to them. And I'm gonna just make the top candy black and let it bleed down and just to the black stencil, not anywhere else, just where the black is. And it should give it a really neat um, purplish black look. It's more really the the black is actually like I said. It's got a violent a violet tint to it. So it um it'll be perfect for this bait. Get some UVLS mixed in this. Let's get it mixed up. And plus, it's just going to have a super sheen to it. We're just going to use the regular eyes that came with the bait. They're kind of a, a different eye. And 
and we'll put some, we will use some micro prisms on this. I like to use them on shad baits or anything top water because it just gives it a really neat look. I'll let that sit in my clean this gun out for a second. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Really getting a great turnout from y'all. Just put things down in the comment box that you want me to do. If you got questions that I'm not answering, if I, you know, as long as I understand and know what to, you know, know what to tell you, I'm going to tell you. I don't, I don't hide secrets. That's one thing I'm going to say about my channel is I'm, I just want to, I want to help people. I want them to have a good time while they're doing this. This is a very good hobby. And it's a lot, everybody had help coming through, so we just will help each other. So let's get a little bit of this black candy. Stir it up one more time. Okay. You can see there, it's not a, it's got a, a really cool color especially for this bait here. This is almost just perfect for it. So we're just gonna build it up. I'm not worried about doing it all in one pass. And then when I come up on the black, I just let it slide down. I don't want it going all over my gold. To do is we're going to dry that off for the gun and we're going to put a couple coats on there we'll put a couple coats of candy on this one so if you've never painted a blue back heron this is a it's a relatively easy one to do it's just a matter of laying the layering the colors correctly and and i showed you how to use the stencil i know you've probably seen it a lot of people have questions about that they're going, how did they get all them colors? And they're all, you know, you just leave the stencil down. Don't, um, don't move your stencil. Let's turn this up a little bit. Get this dried off. Because you really don't want to layer wet on wet. Let it dry. takes a little bit longer to do than using the heat, but I've just had a lot better luck with the candies when I'm not throwing the heat to them. They tell you not to throw the heat to them, just to use cold, cool air. And it dries it relatively fast. We'll go ahead and go back to our candy. Get another coat on there. Let it fade down the black just a little bit. Put a little bit on that eyebrow right there. Well, I kind of splattered it a little bit. 
pressure's up a little higher than I like. Let me cut it down. And there's a couple ways you could do this. You don't, if if I wasn't gonna use the micro prisms, what I would do is I'd use something called Hot Rod Sparkle. Hot Rod Sparkle is a really cool color. And what it is, it's kind of like the micro prisms that you can get it in colors, but I use the white. So we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna clean the gun out. And we'll put the eyes in and we'll shoot it with some UVLS. There's a couple different techniques you can use on this one. I'm gonna leave this one clean. You could take the um, a dryer sheet and hit the lower part of this body. You know, it has that, uh, bluebacks have them too. Uh, they'll have um, that rough look right, right in here, down on there on the belly. I'm just gonna make this one clean. Um, but you can do that. Uh, you could use the saran wrap technique. It would it would give it that same blotchety look. A lot of people like that. If you wanted, if you're if you're into the realism part, you know, those are things that you can do. And we will do some videos later on Shad doing that. I just my my style. I just like it clean. You know, I, I see all kinds of techniques being done out there, and they're neat but I just kind of stick to my own technique. All right, so let me get these eyes out. We're gonna let that dry. I'll have to let probably dry that. I don't wanna stick my hand in it like I did the one last night. But I love, I mean, bluebacks are our main forge in my lake and I just, I love them. I love making baits that look like them. this top off and this it you can see i hope you can see it on the camera but when i told you i was taking the black and letting it just kind of run down into the black that i already had i can already see the purplish tint to it around by the gold and that's what you're trying to achieve with a blue back let that dry just for a second and we'll get some UVLS made up just to go over the bait I love these big crank baits too the quality of these things is crazy they actually have a weight transfer system in them so when you're casting you're going to get maximum distance on the cast because it's going to roll back and, and pop out when you let go of it they're they're really nice blanks they really are I've done some where I've modified the eyes. I just was going to go ahead and just use the regular ones in it tonight. I'm going to take the tape off. I'm going to let this UVLS sit for a second. We'll go ahead and take the tape off of this. Get this off with my gloves on. Let me get my tweezers out here. But it's a cool one to, to paint, especially if you do have blue backs in your, in your, where, where you're fishing. This is a killer bait because it mimics them. It, it, it definitely matches the hatch. And it looks so much cleaner with that bill off too. So we'll go ahead We'll get the eyes in it. I'll let y'all take a look at it. And then we'll go ahead and hit um, hit the UVLS on it. Then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and put a coat of true, uh, some epoxy on this one tonight. So these eyes are pretty neat. They're different. 
they're going to match the bait perfectly. That's one reason why I just left them alone. I wasn't going to change it out. I got to put it the other way. Oh, I say that. No, I've done it wrong. I'm going to get this in there. There we go. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and spray it with some UVLS. I'll pick it up and let you see it. And then we'll go to epoxy in this one. We'll mix some up and get it done. Go ahead and change my gun. You know, painting the shad patterns is like a big thing right now anyway. Everybody's doing the swim baits, and, and that's great, you know. We're going to go ahead and do the bill. We're going to do it all. I, I don't know if you can see that. Like I said, you, the, the purple tint and the gold, this thing is just... And you can even see the scale pattern on the on the on the pearl down at the bottom against the silver. Put a little bit extra on the top, so it's that candy. Okay. Clean the gun out. I'll pick it up and let you see it here in a minute because I'm going to heat set it. And then we'll get some true coat ready to go. And we'll make this thing pop. Okay. So let me heat set this really quick. I'll be right back. So I'm gonna let that sit. I'm gonna let you take a quick look at it. You can actually see all the scale patterns when you start looking at it up close. The bottom is very faint because it's you know white on silver, but it does look really cool. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna let it sit there for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and get my epoxy ready to go and I'll be right with y'all. I'll leave it up so you can look at it. And if you want to, if you got any questions, go ahead and throw them in the box. Go ahead and get that there. The blue backs are a, a fun bait to paint. Like I said, I, I do know a little bit about them because they are here at my home lake. And that is a good thing because I have painted plenty of them. prisms because we're going to definitely put that on this bait. This one is really going to be a good looking bait. Remember why I got the, I used the stencil from Whitmore Farm on this. 
get with Jeff. Great stencils, great guy. He's got a great variety. So we're gonna stir this up. And I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. I gotta get a I gotta get a stick to put on this one. Get it stirred up really good. If you haven't tried the true coat yet, uh, I absolutely love it. Now that I've gotten used to it and understand that it's done by volume, not weight. Uh, once you figure out your little system, it's um, it's very easy to deal with um, and do. Not hard at all. Not hard at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean this out just a little bit real quick. What I have to do is I have to take out epoxy from the, the lure before it. Because these baits are big. They they require some, some room to get them on. So it takes a second to get this stuff ready. All right, I think I can get it in there now. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pop it on here and tighten it down. And then I can hold it. I can go ahead and do away with this just makes it a little bit easier to epoxy these baits, especially if I'm doing them on a video, because I'm gonna try to stay in the camera. I know I, I get sidetracked sometimes when I get off, but I'm sorry about that. I'm still getting used to talking and painting at the same time. I'm gonna use a littler brush. It may take me a few more minutes to do this, but you can see when you, the micro prism's already jumping on that black candy. Just take my time and just go over the entire bait. You can really see those color transitions now with the where the black candy slit slides down onto the the black scale pattern. It's got a purple tint to it. Because that's what you're looking for. Go over these eyes really good. We'll do the bill last. You can really see the scale pattern a lot better too. Once you put the epoxy on, I can see all the scale pattern from the, from the white to the gold to the now purple and black. Get these eyes filled up really good. I want to do me some top water baits in the same color for my stripers. I always go around these gill plates. Anything that's raised. I go over it a couple of times. Go ahead and flip it over. Start doing this bottom. see that but those 
those micro prisms are just crazy what the, what it's going to do to this bait in the sunlight they're going to destroy this thing and the good thing about this epoxy it draws from the inside out i have very to none problems with bubbles so we'll go ahead and do the bill now this bill has a a circle and I don't go down in the circle. I stay out of that. I stay up on the high side of it because that's where your line tie is and I just don't want that to be an issue. It's not gonna be a problem. I just go around it. It's not hard with a little brush. Just gotta make sure you get enough on here because it wants to bead up sometimes and I don't, you just gotta go over the whole bait, that's all. And make sure you got enough on there. And the, 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 the bill's gonna have the micro prisms in it too, but I really don't care about that. It's, it's gonna shine straight through it when the sun hits it. And it's just gonna give it a neat effect. If you've never used those, those are, are really neat. So we'll flip that over. That looks pretty good. Get some on there. And I'll move it around. Just get it on there good. Then I'll run long strokes on it. I'll go side to side. If I see any air bubbles, I have a little torch that I can hit it with, but I usually don't have those issues. So that's what you're looking at here. Your micro prisms are really popping on the sides too. This is my rendition to a blueback heron. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you'll know when I'm doing upcoming videos. Put it down in the comments what you want me to do. Thank you all for everything you're doing for me with the subscriptions and just supporting me. And like I said, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.